Welcome to one of our winter information sessions at the Gulf Boys Bay Women's Institute. We're happy to have Morag Budgen and Alan McIntosh from the Georgian Bay Center for the Arts to lead us in a curbside craft making a mosaic bird. This event was made possible by a senior's community grant. Um, so it's my, my partner Alan McIntosh and I are the ones are, are sort of everything behind Georgian Bay Studio for the Arts. We have here in our studios we have a full pottery studio, a full printmaking studio, a full stained glass studio, a swing space where we do things like maybe teaching this and painting and a printmaking studio, which is sort of turned into a restaurant. It was, a, yeah, it'll get to a printmaking studio at some point. Um, and all our classes are online. So, um, but I have to say, I think the mosaics have been the most popular thing that we have done. We do classes as well. Um, and it's interesting when Tara said that it might take you days. It could take you days. It could take you two hours. It's, it's really dependent on how much you want to put into it and how, how, how patient you are, really. I do this with kids sometimes, and there, some of them can be done in 20 minutes. Um, and one, other ones are just sitting there for hours and hours. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. So. So if you do cut yourself, wash it with some soap and water and bandage yourself up. I, I, I haven't had any major injuries and generally in the classes I teach is me that cuts myself, not the kids or the adults, but um, do be aware it's sharp and you can get, there are little splinters as well. So it, um, it doesn't hurt to have some kind of sweeping device or just remember not to sweep with your hand. Once you dump your, if you dump your glass on a plate, don't go, oh, I'm just gonna wipe, just gonna, I'm doing this, wipe this up like that. Don't do that. <laughs> Use a piece of paper or something because there are sharp shards and little pieces that break off as they're, it's in the bag. Um, so that's probably my biggest warning is everything else is pretty safe, but, but there is the opportunity to cut yourself and to bleed and um, just stay away from your major arteries. So, I guess we would start probably with, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go through the directions slowly and sort of uh, for the first bit, talk about the process of gluing your pieces in. Like I said, it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's, it's a lot of fussing and moving things around. You can also glue, you've got a bit of time to shift, shift it if you glue it down and it's not in the right spot. Sometimes I've even had people who glue and then after everything's dried, go back in and fill the pieces where it's, um, with the other pieces. So everybody should have one frame protected by painter's tape. Frame will look like this, but bigger and with painter's tape on it. A pair of latex gloves, a squeeze bottle of glue. And this is just a clear glue. Um, it's a school glue, clear. You can use white glue if you want, it will dry clear. Um, it's it's non-toxic, just simple glue. Uh, one bag of dry grout. And that again is just a simple non-sanded grout that you use to grout your tiles. Um, popsicle sticks for mis mixing. Some latex gloves. So the stick and the latex gloves you'll use during the grouting process, which is very messy. Um, there is a shop cloth, again used during the grouting process, a scraper, which is just a little piece of, um, of illustration board to help scrape the grout down, and your colored glass. So um, if you do have any problems, our, on, the, on the instructions you have, our email is on there, email me anytime. If, you know, tomorrow you go, oh, wait a minute, that's not working, or I don't have enough glass, I want this color of glass, just email us, we can provide more glass. Um, I've even had, not very often, but somebody just like they needed one piece and they just couldn't, they just didn't have it. I'm glad to cut it for you. I won't drive it to you, you can come pick it up, but I would glad, pro gladly provide you with that piece of glass. So I do recommend, and many, some of you may have, we won't do it tonight, to read over the instructions before you start because you don't want to get ambushed at the last minute when you suddenly realize that you need something and you're up to your elbows and grout and you can't get it. Um, like I said, everything is pretty safe except for the sharpness of all the glass. And again, if, uh, I just try to anticipate what I think everybody will need. Sometimes I may get it a bit off, so um, feel free again to let us know if you need more glass. I've done, you had 15 birds, so I've just done a variety of colors. 
in the bird. Everybody's got blue and green for their background, brown for their tree, green, green for the leaves, brown for the tree, blue for the sky. And I think there's several different colors for the birds. Um, and I tried to, I packaged them all and marked them. So you should know what is what just to make it that much easier. So um, honestly, and it's your project if you don't have to follow what it says. In fact, when you're arranging your glass, you can think about the pattern of your glass. If you, if it's a long branch, you could lose longer pieces. If it's, if it's um, a feather going in one direction, you can use that. These, these are a little more directed the, the glass that you have, but if you ever continue on with mosaic, that's something to help not only with color blocking, but the pattern, the way the, the cut of the, of the glass that you use. Um, I think that's about it. It. So we can go right in. I, I think the best way to set up your station is you have some paper plates and sort of dump your glass that you're going to work with. I think probably why don't we start with starting. I always start in the corner, but if you want to start with the bird, that's fine too. Whatever you like. And in fact, if you do start with the leaves in the tree, sometimes that might make it a bit easier if you do these sort of focus parts and then you're gonna come in and fit your sky in. Um, it really is, I've done it both ways. So I, I, I probably wasn't, um, I've seen people do both. It depends really on you. Um, some people like that kind of, that, that order of starting one direction. Some people like filling in all these things and then coming in. This has a sun in it, which you don't have. Um, but if you start with the bird or the, the, the tree or the leaves, that's absolutely fine. And, um, yeah, in fact, it might make more sense. So filling all these spaces in, and then you're going to have to come in, but it'll be easier for you to see where to go. I, I think that I'm, I'm really vague on that <laughs> and literally either way will work. You've got a couple of paper plates and putting your glass in the paper plates is a good idea. Um, say you're just gonna start with the sky in the corner for a bit, so dump all your blue. Now you'll have two or three shades of blue. I try to make it so it's not all one color and it looks really static. If, um, if we have different colors, it just gives it a little bit more um, interest. All the glass I've given you is translucent, so it does look best with light behind it. So um, I think that that's one of the joy, that's one of the best things about these is they look so beautiful with the light behind them. So what you're gonna do is take, for instance, if we're gonna start on this corner, in fact, I'll just use this one, even though this tree is not what, what you're doing. You wanna start laying your pieces on. Jigsaw, you don't have to glue right away. You wanna lay them on and figure out what you're gonna do. You don't want to lay too big of a section on because somebody like, well, it's not going to happen because you're not here with me, but often somebody will have laid it all down and I'll walk up and do something and bump them and it all just goes flying, which is really frustrating. So kind of pick, pick a section, whether it's the bird or the corner, look at your glass and just sort of lay your pieces out. And I would say, you know, you want to do at least maybe a, a two inch section, two or three inch section. Get it laid down, find your pieces to fit in, and then glue it in once you've just sort of done that section. Um, you have lots of time. The, once you put the glue on, it, it doesn't dry right away. Now, here's the thing about the blue. So you have several different colors of blue. What I do, oh, I always think of the sky as being lighter down to darker blue. So I'll start with light blue up this way and dark blue up this way. And when I get to the middle where I wanna mix them, I'll have maybe a light blue and then I'll have a few dark blue and each, each sort of inch I go down, I'll add more and more. So you can see in this one, let's see the best way to get the light there. You can see in this one, I've got a dark blue at the bottom and a lighter blue at the top. So a lot of dark blue down here, a lot of lighter blue up here. When we get into the middle, I'll have a few darker ones and a few just kind of spatter them out and then as you get further down, you just add more of the darker blue and less of the lighter blue to give you a little bit of variegated weight. You don't have to do it that way, um, but there is there are a couple of colors of blue to give you that option. 
is there a is there an idea about like how much space these should there should be in between each of the pieces yes. of glass? If you look at this one that I've done here, this is just a sample, and you can see they're pretty close. So it's really up to you. I would not go further than two millimeters. One millimeter is good. You want a bit of space so that the grout can get in there to hold it. Um, big gaps. If you had a gap that was bigger than two millimeters, the grout it the grout kind of sinks in. And it's just it's just not quite as um, effective. So I would say try and get about a millimeter to two millimeters. Now, if you look, there's some spots, if you can see there's some spots here where you just have a little triangle here where there's no space in there. That's okay, that will fill in. It really depends on you. I've had people who do it really super tight and people who have, have done it looser. Just, just think between one millimeter and two millimeters space in between. Okay. You'll look at, um, the leaves, the thing about leaves too is you've got, I tried to make sure there was lots of triangles so that you can get in there when you have a leaf, you can get in there and sort of use that tip. It could be the tip of the leaf and then a bit, it's not going to be, it's going to be almost pixelated. It's not going to be perfect, but once it's done, it, it will look amazing. I can guarantee. Triangles are very important. Triangles fill lots of spots, but you can also use triangles. I mean, this, this leaf, for instance, I would use a triangle at that end. I would use a triangle at that end and then just fill it in in between. Okay. Um, my question is in the corner, do, do you have to go tight into the corner um, to start? You should. You should have it almost like that into your corner. So don't leave big gaps. Um, okay. Again, because it just, it, it, it doesn't, it won't hurt, but it just, I find it, uh, it's a lot more, um, it looks, um, I'm losing my words because it is late at night. It is more appealing if it comes up against the edges. One okay. thing you want to do is make sure you're not pushing on this. If you look, we have just silicone the back to keep that, that uh, frame and the glass in place. So don't push on it. it, it it's, it's fairly strong, but um, it will, it can pop out if it gets if you you're really pressing hard on it but it is and you it is nice there's actually lots of usually lots of nice corners for you to get in and just uh, put this actually makes more sense to do it this way um when you're gluing them there's a couple of things you can do you can put glue on your section so you can just glue on, don't glue too big a section because it will dry and just get messy. So you can put glue directly on the glass frame or you can put glue on your tile. If you're gonna put glue on your tile, it's not gonna help you seeing that, but it's too much glue and it will seep out, too little glue and when you do the grout, it will seep under. So there's just sort of a, a nice happy medium of glue you don't want, like I said, too little. And when you grout it, it seeps under too much and it just takes forever to dry. So if you cover your tile, so I would put, I would almost just do, I'm just doing like a line drawing triangle on that one. You see that bit of glue there? And then gluing it on. And obviously if this was flat, it wouldn't be falling off. I just, if I was going to put, let's say I'm going to put a piece of glue in here, I just fill that kind of all up like that. That, and then I would stick my glue, my, so it doesn't really matter. I, you want to make sure the whole surface of the glass of the tile is going to be covered with glue. Um, so you can see on my thing too, that I do have a, I do have a bit of space in between those and it's okay. I'm just trying to bring it forward for you to see. You can see that there is a bit of space in between those two and that is fine. I lost that piece of glass when I was bringing it over. I think anywhere like that is absolutely fine. And as I said, you have time when the glue is drying or before the glue is dried to smush things around. Move that, put that in there, move that there. But it is like a big jigsaw puzzle. Now, I think I mentioned in the in the sheet that don't 
lay down too big a section again, because if you bump it, you'll be really frustrated when it goes flying everywhere because it was that perfect fit and you'll never be able to do it again. So even though that, that grout, you don't want too much of it, it can be used as a design element too. So there are certain things like maybe between your tree or your bird and your tree, you make sure you leave a nice white line, a, a space. So you can, you can think of that grout as a design element too. Um, and the best thing about this is like, honestly, you can sit and do a corner and spend half an hour on it and then put it aside and come back the next day. It does not have to be all done at once. The grout has to be done at once, but this section, it can just take all the time you want. Now you'll notice if you look at the bird pieces, I did cut the bird wings. Uh, the bird is two different colors. In your bird, I believe your wing is not, either your wing or your body is more, tr is more opaque than it is transparent. So that there is a little bit of, of um, contrast between. Some of you have mirror uh, for your body or for your wing, which is really fun. Uh, we, got, we have some beautiful glass that people have donated here. And I've tried to, whereas there's many smaller pieces in this with your wings, I've tried to cut you three or four pieces. So it's, it's not as much to fit together. So, um, and you'll find with your body, there'll be one round piece for that belly. Um, I tried to make sure everybody, and I always try to make sure everybody has a round piece for that belly just right there. So if you look at that, so your, your pieces are gonna be more like that. So they're long. So you want your piece to go sort of here, one, and some of them are actually, some of them are like this, and then there might be another one that's more like that, giving you that opportunity to go make that sort of a rounded at the shoulder here. Um, and there might be a couple that have a few more, but basically that's, there'll be three or four pieces. So if you're, if that's the wing, and then you've got this sort of bell, underbelly here that comes, that this little round, piece that comes there. They're not exact. It's not exact. It's not exact science. And you just, that's why you have to fiddle and futz there. The head is held together, is not round. There's, there's just a bunch of pieces put together for that. The eye and the feet and the nose are in a separate little baggie. I've given everybody a choice of two or three beaks because I don't know, everybody likes a different beak. Some of them, if you have a red bird, I may have included a little more black so that you could do a little crust for a cardinal. Um, sometimes I do that, I'm not sure if I did. Um, cardinals and blue jays just have that sort of uh, a little crust. So um, you'll know if I did, because there'll be a piece of black there that won't, you won't know where it will go. So the feet, I've given you little pieces to uh, piece together the feet and the eye. Um, everybody has two eyes. They only need to use one today, but there are two for you to choose the one that you prefer. Um, the wing. Now check when you check your glass because many of them are have an oil slit color on one side, and you want to use that side out. So many of them are iridescent, and uh, so make sure you don't put the iridescent side towards the towards the. Um, the glass. The other thing is with, I don't know how many, but some, a lot of the branches and a lot of the sky and maybe even some of the birds are textured glass. You want the textured facing out um, just because it, it, it is a really nice um, effect. And, um, when you grout it, it's going to get filled. All those grooves are going to get filled with grout. Um, once it's semi, what, it, they, you can wipe them out, but there'll always be some in there. So when it is perfectly dry, you can just take a toothpick and go in there. And it's, it's a little painstaking, but it really is worth it because the texture, especially that, that brown glass, a lot, of the, a lot of you have, it's really nice having that texture to make it look like bark. So make sure you clean up and um, with a broom, if you do, like if you have a little hand broom or a cloth or something to sweep. Don't use your hand um, and get it all back in the baggie so there's no glass around to ambush anybody. 
Okay, so grouting, you have a bag of grout. I'm gonna recommend you take a couple of tablespoons of it and maybe put it aside just in case you add too much water because you can't go back. Um, so then if you add too much water, you can put that grout in. You can, if you have a, a it, it's probably easier if you put it in a cup, if you have a paper cup or a cup that you can wash out any as well. Um, I'm just gonna do it in the bag in case you don't have a cup. So I'm just gonna take a bit of water. I'm gonna pretend that I took some out already and I'm gonna take a bit of water. What you wanna get it to is, and you wanna have everything ready before you do this because it will dry up. You wanna make sure that you're not, um, yeah, you don't wanna start this process and then go, oh, wait a minute, I forgot that I've got a roast in the oven. I better go um, because it will dry. So you want it to be the consistency of oatmeal. I said it is a, probably a bit easier if you do it in the cup, but because uh, I'm just gonna do it this way because maybe you don't wanna put it in your cups. So, and if you have in the cup, you're just stirring it with your sticks. Make sure you get all the lumps out of it. There's still some in there. This is messy. You want to put an apron on or wear dirty clothes that you don't wear anything that you love or that you plan on going out in later. And I recommend putting the gloves on for this. I'm not going to, um, but it is probably, so you can see how that sort of just, I'm going to put, yeah, that's a good consistency. I made sure that it's all like, Greek yogurt. Yeah. So you do a couple of things at this point. You could cut the corner of the bag and squeeze it out. So you can use your hands. I use my hands a lot. And I'm going to have to use my hands because I am working upright and not flat. Le voilà. So I have, I made this. Now here's a couple of tips right now. When you're putting your grout on, be aware that there are bits sticking out. So you don't want to, that's why we have this, or just if you're doing it, do it really slowly so that you don't get snagged and cut by anything. So I'm gonna use either my wooden spoon, my wooden spoon, it's not a spoon, my wooden stick or my spatula, and I'm gonna just spread it on. This is one of the reasons we have the tape as well on the side of the, um, oh, bummer, it's got all over me. That was expected. You're gonna go right to the edges because you wanna get in, you don't wanna leave any gaps along here either. You wanna fill in every gap you can with your grout. So you can come along and do this if you want. It's going to um, catch. So again, don't do anything too fast because you don't want to pull. You want to wait a full 24 hours um, to make sure that it is perfectly dry or you'll have little pieces pop out. That's one of the reasons you want to make sure that you have enough glue on your pieces because they pop out at this part time. It's not the end of the world, but it is annoying because you have to dry everything out, re-glue it. Okay, so we've got our grout and you're going to cover the whole surface. Remember that you might have some textured uh, textured glass. I did put some textured glass in here and you will, um, when we wipe it off, it might not come off and that's okay. You can do that when it's dry with a toothpick. I might actually, this end might even be a little thick. If it's too runny, that's another, if it is too runny though, that's another opportunity for it to seep underneath. Um, if you have any, if there's any parts that there's no glue. So there's a happy medium, not too thick, not too thin. You're better to err on the side of thick because you can go in and water it down. If you are too thin, well, you have hopefully some left over that you can put in. So I've got that and I'm checking, I'm making sure that all the little, now here's another time, don't press too hard again. This is an old one, so it is a bit, it, it, it's not in there really securely. Do this, don't 
push because again, you just have the silicone on the one side. So just gently do that. Now here's a situation where, because I just glued this earlier, a piece of glass just came out here. I'm going to, it's right in here. So what I would do is come in and clean that out. Maybe even get a, a little shop cloth and a stick and just clean it out to make sure you get the grout out before you're gonna put glue that back in. So I'm just gonna clean that out. But ideally, if, if you've left it enough time and if you've used enough glue, this will not happen. So now I'm going to make sure that there's no grout on my tiny little piece of glass. And I'm gonna glue it back in. Put some glue on it. Stuff that baby back in. There. So, and I'm, I am gonna just very carefully put some grout back around it, but just make sure when I'm, when I'm um, manipulating it, not just be aware of that spot and so that I don't pop it out again. Okay, so I am gonna use my fingers, but I'm going so carefully because there are pieces that are jutting out. Some of the glass is thicker than the other, others and some of it has sharp pieces. So I'm just, and I'm gonna take my shop cloth. So when it's, once you've done it all, that's when you're gonna come in and just gently wipe it. Not pushing down again. You might even have, if you have one that's damp and one that's not, the damp one going off over it first. I'm gonna make this a little damp. So you can see it, it's wiping it off a bit more if, it's, if I've got just a little bit damp. And then coming back with the dry and wiping it really gently again. So this is time consuming, not to, it just takes a bit of patience. Um, and I'm gonna remember that I have that one that popped out there. So I'm gonna be, oh, you go back in there, don't do that. The little one, the little ones are often the ones that pop out. So you wanna make sure that you have enough glue on those. So, so this is just a matter of just doing that. I'm gonna get to a point, might even be about this point right now where, it came out again, I'm just gonna ignore that. Where, the majority of it is, it's off. It's enough that I'm going to leave it now for a bit. Sometimes too, there'll be, there'll be little pieces that you don't even realize are there because they're maybe sitting lower than the other glass and the grout covers it. You'll be able to see that if any of that happens when you look at it from the back. You can see, we look at the back and you can see how some of these places, it, it might be bleeding just slightly in there but generally it looks pretty good, but I can see that this one actually has quite a bit more, but it's covered. And so I can come in here and clean that off. So when you get to that point, you're gonna leave it maybe for half an hour or an hour. And then when you come back the next time, the grout will have set and you can just give it another shine, another wipe. I would say actually leave it for an hour. And then you can come back. And then this is the point where as well, you can see I have some textured glass right, right here. And there is some grout still in it. So I would take a toothpick. I wouldn't take a toothbrush or something that's gonna rub the grout, just something that will get in and just actually touch, just um, work the glass over. So you would just come in and it, it'll flake off really, or even your edges too, when it's a bit dry, it'll just flake off really nicely. There's that one and getting in there and getting that out. And so it, it's really just that, you just have to be really patient and gentle with it. And then once you've gotten it to this stage, just leave it for a while, then come back with your cloth and wipe off that last film. And then you take off your green tape. There are two holes in the top. Oh, goodness. Yeah, no, everything's, I was gonna say, did I, did, your pictures are positioned the way that the two holes are in the top. And at that point, if you just get a cord, any kind of cord, beat it through one, beat it through the other, tie it, 
so that it's triangulated. And then um, if the cord, if you're not sure that the knot's gonna hold, put some glue on that knot and leave it, and then you'll be able to hang it. Um, and if you need to just, depending on the cord, if it's string, if you just even just wrap it in something masking tape or something to make it firmer so it'll, it'll feed through that hole. Um, and then you're finished and you can hang it. Sometimes I just, I have a couple that I just actually lean on the window ledge. Um, they're nice if you have a, a nice sash window with the, with the um, lock on the top and you can just hang, in, hang your cord over that. So any questions? Yeah, so remember to keep your iridescence facing out, not facing in, because that would be a waste of that lovely iridescent. You can see in here too, like at, at this point too, I, I should, there are a couple of gaps. I can see a gap right there. It's just a tiny, tiny little gap. So I'm just gonna go in now, and my, my grout is stiffening up a bit already. So it doesn't hurt to cover it when you're not using it. So I would just go in there and just fill that little hole it's not a huge deal if that hole is left unfilled. Nobody is getting that close to see them. This, the glue holds it, but this grout is what keeps it, keeps it in place and, and keeps it forever. It'll be interesting too, because you're gonna look at it and you're, it's not until you put the grout in that you really see it, that you really go, it really comes together. So don't be discouraged. Once that grout is in, and even at this point, when you've got the grout, even before you've wiped it off, if you turn it over and look at it from the back, you will go, what? It's gonna look great, I can tell. You can see that from the back. But um, the grout is sort of a, I don't know why, because it, but it, for some reason it just really emphasizes it and makes it look really finished. And I guarantee they're all gonna be beautiful. So here's a piece of glass. This is a lovely blue. Many of you have this blue for your sky. So, this is a quite a nice glass cutter. So the, the tip has a little rotary blade on it that cuts glass. So I'm gonna put this on here. And just with putting pressure on it, I'm gonna go on. Now actually I should pay attention because there's a rippled side and a flat side and I wanna go on the flat side. You're gonna hear a ripping sound as I do it. And that means it's doing it properly. Hear that? So now we've got this line oh there you can see that line right here that i've created so i will tap the glass on the other side and it will magically split like that so those lines work really okay so i'm just going to come in here i'm going to zip across and then normally i would put it on there and i would tap it with this back part and see how it came across so when we're doing tiles we can create we can go zip 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 and then as i tap this we're going to break off in smaller pieces zip that and you tap it from the back i hope i'm you can see my hands and then if i tap it it breaks and makes a smaller piece. So that's what we did is we were making grids and tapping them all. And then one day I discovered this, <laughs> which was a miracle. So all you do is put it in between. Mm -hmm. You can see how I just have these, it's got two rotary blades, much larger than the one on the glass cutter. I put it in between and I snip and it breaks and I snip and it breaks and I can get little pieces, little pieces of glass. So rather than what we were doing before this, if I just, I need a little triangle of this one, I can just take it and snip it. And then I have a nice little triangle. So that is what I know. I, there are probably um, many different ways and to do glass mosaics. We've just sort of taught ourselves and, and by trial and error and, that's how we do it. The Copeways Bay Women's Institute would like to thank Morag and Alan from the Georgian Bay Centre for the Arts for this fantastic curbside craft event. This event was made possible by a grant from the Seniors Community Grant and the Province of Ontario. Thanks for watching.